With all lines welded back in place, you can evacuate and charge the system. Today, all Electrolux refrigerators use R134A refrigerant. While some hybrid refrigerants have been developed, they are not compatible with 134A. Because of that, Electrolux does not condone the use of hybrids in any situation. Charging with a hybrid is setting a booby trap for the next servicer to work on that product, possibly years down the road, because unless the compressor has been marked with the type of hybrid and oil used, the next guy to evacuate the system will contaminate all of his equipment, along with any 134A he has already recovered from other products. While sweep charging is commonly used by servicers, Electrolux does not recommend or condone this practice on 134A systems due to its inconsistent level of success. The problem is that on a highly contaminated system, especially one with a compressor replacement, sweep charging the system pushes contaminants through the compressor contaminating the oil in the compressor, causing eventual failure or reduced efficiency and the need for a repeat service call. It's critical that if your pump is used on systems with R12 and systems with 134A, you ensure that any mineral oil that could be in the pump does not get into the sealed system. Even the smallest amount of mineral oil when mixed with ester oil will foam up and cause a restriction in the dryer filter and capillary tube. Electrolux specifies the use of four ports when charging a sealed system. The fourth port in the system enables you to isolate the pump ensuring that mineral oil in the pump never gets into the sealed system. If you're using a three-port manifold, then add a T-connector to the charging port so you can isolate the vacuum pump from the charging device. Connect the high side at the dryer and the low side at the compressor's process line. Connect from the vacuum pump to the pump port on the manifold and connect from the charging cylinder to the charge port on the manifold. If you're using a three-port manifold, a T-connection with shutoffs on both sides should be used here. With all valves closed, including the diode charge valve, start the vacuum pump. Open first the valve connected to the vacuum pump. Then open the low side valve. Open it slowly to prevent drawing any ester oil out of the compressor. Then open the remaining valve so that you draw a vacuum on all of the hoses as well as the sealed system. You must draw a vacuum of 30 inches for 30 minutes to ensure your system is properly vacuumed out. Or if you have a micron gauge, simply pull the system down to 500 microns or less. This is a good time to ready your charge. First, determine how much 134A is needed for this unit. That info is on the model number and serial plate. If you're using a dial of charge, heat it up to around 30 PSI higher than the ambient temperature. Then set the dial of charge to approximately 30 degrees higher than ambient temperature. Set the adjustable indicator based on the charge required by the system. This unit has 13 ounces in it. The charge requires 6 ounces of refrigerant, so we set our indicator at 7 ounces. If you're using an electronic scale, Make sure it's calibrated according to the manufacturer's recommendations and be extremely careful not to touch the tank or its main valve while dumping the charge. While pumping the system down, if your pump has a bubble window, check it occasionally. You may see the oil start to foam and bubble a little. That foaming will prevent you from pulling a deep vacuum. If that happens, reduce the flow and the foaming should disappear. The most critical step in this procedure occurs when you reach the targeted vacuum. You must close the pump valve before turning off the pump. Otherwise, you will pull contaminants and mineral oil back into the system from the pump. After turning off the pump, close both the high and low side manifold valves. Let the system sit for at least 10 minutes, verifying that it can hold this vacuum. Once you're sure you've got no leaks, start dumping the charge. Begin by opening only the high side valve and dump the measured charge through the high side. Once the charge is in, first shut off the charging device, then the charging valve and the high side valve. Some of the charge will be left in the charging hose, the high side hose and the manifold. You'll fix that in a minute. Now turn on the compressor. 
As the condenser warms up, the high side gauge should start climbing and the low side should drop. If they don't, you may have accidentally welded a line shut. Once you've established the system is working and has no blockages, pinch off the high side line of the dryer. With the pinch off tool in place and with the compressor still running, slowly open both the high side and the low side valves and the charging port valve. This will allow any refrigerant lying in the high side, low side and charging hose to be pulled into the system through the low side, reducing the chance of short charging the system. This system of charging ensures that all of the refrigerant leaving your charging device will end up in the sealed system, but it only works if you keep the low side valve closed while dumping the charge. Now you can close the low and high side valves and turn off the refrigerator. Remove the high side hose and with the pinch off tool in place and with the compressor turned off to reduce pressure, weld the end of the process tube shut. Only remove the pinch off tool when you have a good weld. Now turn the compressor back on until the low side gauge is just about down to zero and pinch off the low side process tube. Again, turn off the compressor to make welding easier. Remove the hose and weld the process tube shut. You should now have a properly charged sealed system. Anytime you are troubleshooting a product, always eliminate all other primary components as a possible source of the problem before cutting into the sealed system. Some things to look at would be power. Make sure you've got 110 volts reaching the system. Check the gaskets for leaks or imperfections. Are the interior lights staying on, causing excessive heat? Check all the fans. Also make sure interior vents aren't blocked and that the condenser isn't excessively dirty. Finally, is the defrost system functioning properly? If all of these systems are functional, do one more thing before cutting into the system. Check its electrical draw. If it's pulling normal amps, then the problem is not in the sealed system. But if your reading is high or low, get out your process tools. There are two common problems that can arise in a sealed system, leaks and restrictions. Beyond that, there are a few less common problems. Each problem can be identified by comparing and contrasting the readings on your gauges and your meter with the status of the evaporator and condenser. These readings will be abnormal in various ways based upon the problem at hand. It's important to understand that the readings we show in this program are based on a normal reading that would be found in 70 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature. We cannot tell you what normal is on your service call because normal fluctuates with ambient temperature. Low side leaks are characterized by low pressure readings on the low side and high readings on the high side. The system will pull more amps than normal. The evaporator may be only partially frosted, and you'll hear some hissing and gurgling coming from it. The condenser will feel slightly cooler to the touch than normal. To locate a low side leak, look for bad joints, joints with cracks, signs of oil residue around them. High side leaks will feature low readings on both the low side and high side with a low electrical reading. The evaporator may be only partially frosted or not frosted at all. You should hear some hissing and gurgling at the inlet. And you should find the condenser slightly cooler than normal from lack of pressure. Also, the compressor will run very cool and quiet. But wait, if these conditions make this look like a high side leak, check the service history on this product. If it was recently serviced, it may have been short charged and short charges give gauge readings nearly identical to high side leaks. Go ahead and look for a leak, but don't be surprised if you can't find one. You'll know for sure when you pump down the system if it can hold a vacuum. Look for high side leaks the same way as the low side leak, looking at the joints, but because of the higher pressure you can more easily find these leaks with bubbles or with using a leak detector. 
Partial restrictions will feature low readings on your low side gauge. It may eventually pull into a complete vacuum. The high side gauge will read a little higher than normal and the system will pull lower amps or watts than normal. The evaporator may only be partially frosted and may have a ball of frost at the inlet. And you'll hear some hissing and gurgling coming from it. A total restriction from moisture or debris caught in the cap tube is a little easier to identify. You'll find the low side in a complete vacuum with the high side only a little above normal pressure. The electrical draw will be low with all of the refrigerant pumped out of the evaporator and you'll find no frost on the evaporator. These less common problems should not be overlooked especially if the system has been serviced recently. A worn or damaged compressor could be the result of heavy contamination from a low side leak. Has the system been serviced? One symptom that should stick out with a bad compressor is the low side pressure reading. It will always be high due to the compressor's inability to draw down that side of the system. For the same reason, the high side will also read low and because the compressor lacks compression, the amps or watts will read low too. Another symptom that helps diagnose this problem is the lack of frost and the lack of hissing or gurgling at the evaporator. You will also find the condenser much cooler than normal. Over or under charging a system occurs when servicers fail to follow Electrolux's evacuation and charging procedures. They must be followed precisely to assure proper charging. Overcharging from a previous service call would show up as a high pressure reading on both sides of the system. How high depends upon how much additional refrigerant is in the system. And because the higher pressure makes the compressor work much harder, the electrical readings will be high. This system has more refrigerant than it needs, so you'll find a heavily frosted evaporator. The most unusual visual clue that you'll see is that frost has even developed on the suction line. Charging a sealed system correctly, without leaving any refrigerant in the hoses or manifold, requires following a specific procedure. Varying from that specific procedure even slightly can result in short charging a system. As mentioned before, short charging diagnoses almost identically as a high side leak. The only way to confirm it is to see if the system can hold a vacuum. A system with air in it is uncommon but could result from a poorly executed charge. The low side will be near normal with pressure on the high side higher than normal. Electrical readings will be low. The evaporator may only be partially frosted and you may hear some hissing and gurgling coming from it. But the condenser will show a small temperature differential between the inlet and outlet.